Thanks for watching this Identity Provider Selection tutorial. This tutorial will discuss how our plugin makes the decision to which identity provider to um, send to you for authentication. That's all very easy if you only have one identity provider, but in the scenario where you have two or three or even 10 or 20, um, or even if you have the scenario where you have one identity provider but still a large number of users who should authenticate with a local username and password into the Atlassian application, if you remember from my general SAML tutorial, our plugin needs to make the decision to which identity provider to send you or to show you the local login screen without knowing who that user is. So we can't make that decision based on any user attributes like username, group membership or anything. So we need to make that in a different way. And this is really what this tutorial is about. What are the ways that we support? So I'm just gonna explain our demo setup um, a little bit. You see our plugin configuration. We actually have two identity providers configured. One is an Azure AD, and I gave that the name Azure AD. I gave it a description in near employees, and it's got a value um, of 10 in the weight field. Just gonna click to uh, the ADFS. So this is, has the name ADFS. It's for US employees as the description, and it's got a weight of 20. Just remember that for a second. So in general, if I just quickly click on redirection, you see with the enable SSO redirect, that means redirection is turned on. And now we go to the identity provider selection tab. The default setting for our plugin is use the IDP with the lowest weight. You remember um, Azure had the weight value of 10, ADFS the weight value of 20. What this setting means is um, that you always get redirected to the one with the lowest weight. In our case, that would be 10 um, Azure AD. So this setting is great if you're in a, a migration scenario where you go from um, ADFS, for example, to Azure AD, and uh, you can set up the uh, second identity provider, you can test it via a special URL, and then once you're happy everything works, you just swap out the um, uh, weight values to determine which one is the active one. And you have a simple rollback if it doesn't work, you just change the weight settings back and all is fine. And um, this is also the setting you use if you only have one identity provider and want everyone going there, then it's just gonna send it to that identity provider. Let's look at the next one, the IDP selection page. Gonna select that and save the settings. And I'm gonna demo that first of all. So let me go to an incognito window where I'm not authenticated. Let's go to my demo Jira. And there you see now it um, shows me a selection page, like the name says. So it um, shows me the um, all the configured IDPs, the IDPs names and the descriptions. So our Azure AD with EMEA employees, ADFS with US employees. And it also shows me the link to get to a login with username and password. Everything that our plugin shows to you um, is template based, so it can be changed. And I'll show you that in a second. Also the default behavior of this IDP selection page that is once you've selected your IDP once, the next time you need authentication, the plugin will show you the uh, same page here for three seconds. So this, your last selection essentially is saved in a cookie. It'll show you that page for three seconds and then automatically redirects you to your previous choice if you've been there um, on that page before. we just quickly go back to the plugin and I'll show you the page template. So like I said, everything the plugin shows to you is a um, template and can be modified by you. And the IDP selection page template is modified very heavily by customers um, if they use them. You really want to show your user something that makes sense to them. Maybe the, the name of the IDP and the description is enough, but you might have a totally different terminology so you can completely change this um, uh, selection page to make sense for you and for your users. And you see it's a typical template, so select your identity provider. Here you also see the um, script that uh, does the forward after three seconds. So if you want it to be five seconds, you can do that. If you want it to never auto forward, um, you can do that, uh, you just remove the script. Or if you want to um, forward after a millisecond, which is the same thing as pretty much not showing this uh, dialogue ever again, you can tune it down to one millisecond and then the user always gets redirected to the same IDP um, until he deletes his cookies, essentially. So I scroll a little bit further down. Here you also see the uh, login with user name and password link. If you don't want that there, you can also remove it. 
So there's a lot of um, tweaking and adjusting you can do on this page. But now let's go back to the IDP selection and I'll show you some of the other options. The next method is the email address method. I'm going to select that. And now you see an additional option became here to do some mapping of domain names, which are really regular expressions. So of domain names to identity providers. So you see resolution.de goes to Azure AD, test.de goes to Azure AD, blah, 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 no SSO. Let's put that to ADFS and everything else will send to um, uh, no SSO, which means login prompt of the application. I'm just quickly going to save that and demo that to you. Let me reload this. Now you, have, uh, you see it has changed and I can now enter my um, uh, email address and based on the domain part, it will then determine where to send me. This is rarely used, but it's important for some of our customers um, that have many identity providers. So for them having a selection page with 50 entries is just not practical. So mapping on uh, email addresses is usually um, what they tend to do. So let's go back to the um, configuration and the last option. And also this page is in page templates and can be changed by the way. So <clears throat> the last one, actually let's set that back to IDP selection page, save settings. The last one is by HTTP request headers. So some of our customers in large infrastructures, or if they have a reverse proxy to do some rewrites, they can determine by the host name that people came in or by the network path or by the reverse proxy that people came in, what kind of user group that is. And hence they can then uh, set HTTP headers which you can define here. So below here, we could have a header X forward for And if that header would be present and it would have the value test.de, then login prompt would be uh, shown the no SSO. You can then also select the IDP to send that to, etc. So um, if you just leave the value empty, then it just looks for the presence of that um, header. So you, whatever you want the header to be, uh, it's free text. Uh, as long as that header is then present, um, it redirects to that identity provider. And the nice thing here is this can actually be combined with the other IDP selection method. So if the request header configuration is present and the request header there, it has, it has precedence. If the request header is not there, then the other selection method will be used. So you could have, for example, if you definitely know someone coming in via that reverse proxy um, needs to go to my first IDP, you can set that request header. And for everyone else, you can leave the um, IDP selection page, for example. So that ultimately concludes what we can do on identity provider selection. So you see there's a, a lot of choice that you have. If you need any more support or if you um, have more questions, then you can always contact our support or you can um, schedule a screen share session with us for free by the links on the screen. So really get in touch with us. Thank you very much.